Wait until you see how this Mastiff reacts when I call him a good boy. Will Champ the Boxer's family decide to come get him at the shelter? And I run into a new senior dog who needs a name. Let's sit with some dogs. This big boy just came into the shelter and he is frozen. Now he's too big to pick up. A staff is doing a really good job of being very delicate with him and guiding him into his kennel. I knew when I saw him, I had to go try and show him some comfort. Let's go in and sit down with him. A lot of dogs in fear will pancake to the ground, but he looked away almost as if he could just hide, then all of this would go away and he would be in a safe space. I found a hot dog piece that the staff left for him, a yummy treat. I don't know a dog that will turn down a hot dog. And so I point this out because it shows that treats require a lot of trust and fear has him completely shut down right now. So much to the point where he won't even eat a delicious piece of hot dog. I don't think he's gonna take treats, but I'm gonna try to entice him with the entire treat stick that I have to see if that might help a little bit. I don't know if I've ever seen a dog treat scare a dog like that. Oh, makes my heart so heavy because you can tell he's just been through it. Now, I mean, this is, he's only been here for five minutes, but it's gonna be okay. Oh, you got big old paws. It's gonna be okay. He's a good dog. First, let me just say I am sorry. Whatever happened to you, however you ended up here, you did not deserve that. You know, paws tucked under, huh, bud? I will tell you this, the good news is it's gonna be okay from here. And someone let you down, but we are not going to. And you are special and loved and it's gonna be okay. You're a good boy. Has anyone ever told you that? You're a good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. Yeah. He's a good boy. We probably don't have much on his story because he just came in. Alexis, do you know his story? Yeah, a good Samaritan found him and animal control took him from the good Samaritan. So I'm assuming they called him. So we don't, but we don't know it, just a stray. We just don't know anything about him. No microchip, no collar, nothing. Hi, buddy. I want to pet him. I just don't know if he's ready for it yet. That's good. More than anything, I want to get him checking me out. He's a good boy. You're a good boy. There we 
we go. That feels better, huh, buddy? Did you see that moment? It was, I'll replay it. It was just a little moment where he kind of bumped me a little bit with his head. He asked for that pet. And I am more than happy to take that opportunity. Yeah. We, have, we don't have a name for him, do we? No, he what? needs one. You need a name. How about Marty? Marty, have we done Marty before? I think so. I think Marty, Marty's a, I feel like Marty's a pretty human name, not a dog name. But this guy needs something, right? He's gotta find his personality, or his little personality has to come out. And maybe a name like Marty will help with that. Because Marty's, like I've met some Martys and they're good guys. Just like you're a good guy. I've never bet, met a bad Marty. Have you ever met a bad Marty? Have you ever met a bad Marty? No. They're, fr they're typically pretty friendly Martys. Right. Martin, if you're in trouble, if you're getting into something you're not supposed to be in. Also, I do a lot of my update first in the members group for a couple different reasons. One, because it's kind of a safe space and sometimes these updates change so fast. If I put it out there publicly and something changes within a couple hours or a day, that could be bad. So I want to make sure there's plenty of time. Uh, but two, it's because I update the members first because you're helping monthly be a part of all of this. So if you want to join, just hit that join button and uh, you'll get updates first. So Champ is still here, so we're gonna go check on him right now. Champ, I'm going to see Champ. Oh, um, but Redford's DNA test results are ready. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, I'll go check on Champ, and then I'll come back, and we'll do the DNA test okay. reveal. Okay. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. Champ's been on my mind since I was here last week, and so I wanna go check on him because his family didn't show up. Remember, I said, why wouldn't they just be here like the day they found out he was here? Well, because they didn't really want him in the first place, or they couldn't keep him or something. Something. I don't know. Buddy? Hi. Hi, Bubba. Hi. How you been, my man? It's good to see you, buddy. You wanna go out to the play yard? Come on, let's go. Officially, the family said that they didn't want to come get Champ because there were allergy problems. And so they were trying to figure out if it made sense to come pick him up from the shelter or if they would just leave him here because their allergies were too bad. Maybe. I suspect it's an energy thing. He's got a lot of energy. And before you can even start to interact with Champ, you've got to wear him down. Watch. So I take him out into the yard and we just spend time together. I distract him with a toy, with treats, just kind of redirecting him so he's not jumping on me. I'm trying to wear him down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And sure enough, after a while, he started to wear down. Now, it's quite a bit of time. Yeah, that only took like 25 minutes. But we're good, but that's good, that's good. It's like, it, it proves he's a good dog. If we can accomplish that in this small space, imagine what a walk or a run would do for him. It would get him perfectly balanced. You know what, you get a treat. I'm gonna give him the whole stick for being such a good boy. Good boy, champ. And from there, the loving and the clown part of the boxer comes out, where they're funny and fun and cuddly and wiggly. They do the boxer bean, where they like stick their butt around, or the boxer wiggle, where they go like this. <laughs> See this? You know what it is? It's a hold sticker. But you know who it's for? This. We got a hold! Yes! Champ? Might be your day today, buddy. So you got any treats? <laughs> That was so cool. I was walking by the front desk and they're like, hey, do you want to put this sticker on Champ's folder? And I said, absolutely I do. Hopefully someone actually shows up now. These holds, I'd say they're like 50-50 of do people actually show up and adopt the dog. But while we're waiting for Champ's potential new family to show up, why don't we go get the DNA test results for Redford? All right, just in case you don't remember Redford's story, when I first sat with him, he was really scared. He jumped at any sign of movement. Sit, can you sit? 
there's definitely some fear in this dog. But Animal Friends of the Valley's team really worked with him. The dog walkers walked him. Everyone showed him kindness and love, and he really came out of his shell. Weeks later, it was like he was a completely different dog. Look at him. <laughs> You're so different than just a week ago. He caught my eye because he was so unique and the transformation was really neat. So I bought a DNA test kit for fun, just to see what he is. <laughs> that tickle your whiskers? <laughs> well, I definitely got some slobber on there. Today, we're gonna see what the results are. Redford, Redford, what are you, buddy? It doesn't matter, obviously. You're amazing. But we have the DNA test results. Hey, we got the DNA results. You want to come? I want to hear. Okay, come on in here. Come on, let's go. Come in. Yeah. Yeah. What did we guess? Do we remember? What did you, hold on. What did you guess? Do you remember? Yes, I said German Shepherd and Kelpie. Is and that possibly right? Chow. You said Kelpie and Chow. <laughs> You know. Yours is a dual answer, mm. not either or. Well, it depends who you ask. What <laughs> <laughs> the phone said German Shepherd, Belgian Shepherd. Okay, so you so said that's what I would be going with. Your Belgian yeah. Shepherd. Okay, what was your guess? I was saying maybe Kelpie. German Shepherd. I don't or think what? he's mixed at all. I think he's a special kind. Shepherd. Yeah. A very unique kind. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I think I think you're right. I think he's a unique Shepherd, but I think yours might actually come up in the DNA test. Drum roll, please. Seven breeds. So 65% German Shepherd, 18% Australian Cattle Dog, 8% Chow, 5% Pit Bull Terrier, and 2% Shiloh Shepherd Dog. Wow! I think the Shiloh Shepherd Dog is kind of what you are alluding to, yeah. huh? Yeah. I think you're completely wrong what? and fired. Chow Chow's in there! <laughs> and you also, well, I was, I was, I was, you can't be fired because we need you, but <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's that is wild. So you are a unique blend. You're like a house blend coffee. But he does have chow chow. He That's does have crazy, chow chow. He doesn't have the blue tongue. Yeah. He's well, kind of got a little streak. People in the comments when we when we made a video on him, it, a lot of people in the comments were just outrageously offended that we even suggested chow chow because he doesn't have anything on his tongue. Uh huh. But yeah. Okay, okay, read it one more time. 65% German Shepherd. Okay. 18% Australian Cattle Dog. I've never guessed that. 8% Chow Chow. Okay. 5% American Pit Bull Terrier. Yep. 2% Shiloh Shepherd Dog, and 1% Lab, and 1% Keyshawn. Hey, just so you know, you said I was completely wrong, yes. but I was 73% correct. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll keep you around for a little while. Yeah, I do the math around here in this family, so, you know. It gives you a family tree. So here's what Redford's family might have looked like. Okay. So his parents were probably a German Shepherd dog, and yep. then it was a Pit Bull Terrier or Australian Cattle Dog mix that was like a mom or a dad of his. Cool. And then his grandparents were all German Shepherds except for one, which might have been a Cattle Dog or Pit Bull. Yeah. And yeah, it even goes up to great grandparents. <laughs> wow. Wait, what's it say? It says we found 22 of Redford's relatives. So it, look at it, it, Chip. A I have an idea. Chip is his son. Chip is his son? Some dog named Chip is. It says 50% likely it's his son. Can we reach out to those people? We can try. Why don't we reach out to those people and see if anyone wants to adopt him, right? Sure. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah. What a cool dog. All right, so now we know what kind of dog he is. Now we just know what kind of family he's going to have. Let's get him adopted. That's fun. It's really fun to know what Redford is. Members, actually, you guys knew first, so thank you for being a member. Uh, you knew a few days before everyone else. It doesn't matter what he is at the end of the day, but it's cool knowing. And now we're gonna put up this sign on the outside of his kennel, and so it's an extra piece of information that might actually help lead to someone adopting him, and he needs to be adopted. He's been in here for too long. We're actually gonna email his family members that show up on that DNA test result to see. You never know, you have to try everything when you're trying to get a dog adopted. So probably a long shot. The better way to get him adopted is with your help. If you share this, you never know your share might be the actual share that leads to him getting adopted. And can I just take this moment to thank all of my friends right here? <laughs> I, you see me filming in here sometimes because these guys aren't gonna bark at me, but can I just show you the level of cuteness here? Thank you for being a good audience member while I film. Like I was just trying to sleep in here and you come in here talking about stuff. They're in here, they're hiding from me. Look at this one. Hi, there it is. Hi. <laughs> They're up to date on all of our stories. They're like, hey, how's Champ doing? <laughs>
This nervous guy right here is nicknamed Ramses. Now Mel, the shelter groomer, scooped him up because not only is he filthy, but he's feeling out of place. Had some sad eyes to me when we were talking this morning. Super dirty, super, super dirty. Super, he's really underweight. He is shedding out back here, you can see. Plus he's real insecure. He's real shy, so maybe the bath I was hoping would help with his confidence, you know? There are multiple signs of stress, and his face is showing that. It's cute that it almost looks like a couple times he's trying to put on a brave face, but that smile is a nervous smile. Oatmeal, aloe, and coconut in it, so that'll be very moisturizing. Nice. That's a good boy. Mel's gonna have to pull out all the stops to fix this coat. As she washes his body, she starts to feel what he's been dealing with. It's like wire. It feels like coarse. It's so coarse. That coarseness she's talking about could easily be attributed to poor nutrition, maybe stress from neglect. And the thing is, is having wiry hair like that can't be comfortable. So Mel ensures that she conditions his coat before starting the drying process. And look, Ramsey starts to come towards Mel for additional comfort. Okay, now the hardest part, the dryer. It can be scary for a lot of pups. And he's no exception. Mel has to bring out her special tool, the hoodie. Okay, outside of it looking a little funny, kind of cute, it helps dampen the noise. What it doesn't do, however, is prevent Ramses from protesting. But Mel gives Ramses plenty of breaks from the dryer and takes time to recondition his coat. Now, I know it's a lot for him to go through, but this is really important for him. It's gonna make him feel a lot better. And you can tell just how bad he is because look at all of that undercoat flying everywhere. That has definitely made him uncomfortable and has to go. I will say though, he's getting a lot more comfortable with Mel, he's calmed down, and that hoodie makes him look pretty cute. I can already tell, as soon as he's cleaned up, it's gonna boost his confidence. Okay, a little more coat conditioner with some shine in it, and look, he is looking good. I cannot say the same for Mel's groom room floor though. That was all you, you needed that. You wouldn't think looking at him in there that he was that bad. Oh, but look at this. He actually knows some tricks. He's had training. Okay, now that he's had some time to decompress and he's feeling a little better, we should try and go sit with him. Hi, are you feeling better? So he was just groomed a couple days ago. And look, you can tell what a groom does for a dog. Like he's feeling so much better. He's still not 100% sure of me, but look, oh my goodness. Different dog. Hi. Can I hang out in your bed? Huh? You want a treat? Show him your pretty face. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're doing good, huh? There's a good dog. Yeah, you're so skinny. Oh, he's so skinny. Sometimes it's hard to tell with dogs with long hair, but I had someone the other day ask me why I throw treats sometimes when I'm sitting with dogs, and it's just gotta break up the energy in the environment. What's Ramsey's story? So Ramsey was actually found by a good Samaritan, brought him in safely, and uh, they were actually interested in potentially adopting him. Oh, they're gonna uh, adopt him? Period. Unfortunately, they looks like they decided against it. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. But that's not the end of the line. Okay, anything else? Uh, no, he just is definitely getting more confident as the staff works with him here. Yeah, you can tell. The grooming must have made him feel a lot better because from the time I saw him until now, wow, much better. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, like I was saying, it is not the end of the line for you because you are a pretty boy and you are coming out of your shell and you're kind and gentle and you love treats. I bet someone comes and adopts you quickly. And you're a gentle treat taker? So he was a stray. He might have been running around for a while just trying to survive off anything he could get. It always amazes me for a dog who's been through that much, just how kind and gentle and trusting he is. Yet another example right here, how amazing dogs are. Good boy. That feel good? You like that? <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow. Oh, just feeling his hip bones. He is so skinny and you can feel his ribs. It's wi it's wild how skinny he is. You can't see it because of his fur. But wow. One of the skinnier dogs I've sat with in a while. Have you ever had a hug from someone just like in the right moment of time when you just really needed it and you just feel it to your core? I 
I feel like that's what he's going through right now. Like, he just, you can just feel this through his whole body and that he hasn't had love in a long time. And then now he just knows he's gonna be okay. Like, you're gonna be fed, you're gonna be loved, you're gonna be in a loving home in no time at all. Hi, right. you know kisses? Okay, hi, right. come here, come here. Yeah, it's a good, good dog, good dog. Right, there you go, I thought that might be the case. I thought you might be looking for the scoop. Yeah, the scoop. You deserve this, you know that? You're a good boy. Whatever you've been through, you didn't deserve it, and you're gonna be okay now. You're in the right place. Someone cared enough to bring you in and make sure you're okay. There's a lot of people here that care about you, including me, Ramses. That's a good name for you. What do you think? She's just melting. Hi. My lap's only so big, you can't melt too much or you're gonna fall off. <laughs> He's like, his butt's slipping off my lap. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. You know, moments like this mean so much because even if just for a few minutes, he can be off guard and he can just let go. He may have never had this moment in his life. And for him to get this, finally, after all this time, everyone, including you, deserve a moment like this where you can just feel safe and loved and cared for. It's like, times like this is like, I wish I could just pull all that pain out of them and all that uncertainty and fear and just take it and then just get rid of it. I know it doesn't work that way, but that's what I'm trying to do. I saw this guy out in the yard and I asked the staff if I could spend a little time with him while they're prepping his room. I just don't, I don't understand it. I don't know if people just get annoyed with their old dog or think maybe he's old and, and if he comes here that they'll take care of him. I feel like it's usually that they think he's a nuisance. And you're not, buddy. Hi, it's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry that this happened to you. I don't even know if your hearing is going to allow you to hear me apologizing to you. <laughs> but I hope you know that this hug means I love you. And look, sometimes you don't know, right? So I don't want to assume the worst, but my heart tells me it's the worst. Do we know his story? He was found wandering around by a good Samaritan on a Saturday night, so. He's a 14-year-old stray? How did you even get around, buddy? I mean, it could be that his family's looking for him. You know, he's not so fast. I don't think he, like, ran out of the house, but who knows? Maybe he somehow wandered out of a yard or something. We don't have a name on him, right? There's, uh, no, I Okay, no name. The good thing about senior dogs is they're really low maintenance. Outside of maybe a litany of meds <laughs> that they might need, they're really fun dogs to foster or adopt. And if you've ever thought to yourself, I couldn't adopt a senior dog because I would be so sad when they pass, the reason you adopt a senior dog isn't for you, it's for them. Think about it. If you can show them a couple days, months, years of love and what it's really like to be loved back, the unconditional love that they give to you, you give back to them. You've done your job. You'll get a pair of angel wings, but more so, they'll leave this world knowing what it's like to be part of a family. There's no greater feeling. Well, you're just as cute as any other puppy in here, I promise you that. What should we name him? How about, what's a whole distinguished gentleman's name? Yes, yes, um, Wilbur? Fred? What if we name him Patrick Stewart? I'm not a Star Trek fan. We could go live and see uh, if people have some name suggestions for him. Okay. Why don't we do that? Okay. I need everyone's help naming him. He needs a name. I thought, because I'm a dork and I was watching Star Trek, Patrick Stewart, you know, Captain Picard. But I don't know, I want I want you guys to help me pick. Ralph. Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Murphy. Murphy. Bud. Bud. Okay, I'm thinking older distinguished names. Harrison Ford. 
Harrison. Ah, I like Harrison. That's a good one. Harrison. I like Harrison. You like Harrison? Well, there it is then, guys. We have it, Harrison. What we really need is to get him adopted. So share this. Like, we, we've got to spread the word. You never know when your share will actually be the share that will get him adopted. There were some other old senior dogs who just came in too, huh? Not that he was with, but just happened to come in at the same time? Just have been around. Well, should yeah. we see if we can pair him up with those other dogs so he's got some companions? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, why don't we do that? Why don't we bring you in to hang out with some other dogs so you have some friends? I just don't wanna, I don't wanna be the one to just leave him in here, you know? I feel like some companionship could really comfort him. Okay, I think this is gonna be a good room for Harrison. Looks like he's getting along with the other pups in there so they can all comfort each other. I think he's gonna be okay. It's getting to the end of the day and the hold for champ still stands, but no one's shown up and they've got maybe like 28 minutes. I just, I don't want champ to go without a really awesome home. His last family was just kind of eh about him. I want champ to have a family that loves him, that wants him, that needs him. That comes down to 28, probably 27 minutes now. Oh, the stress sometimes. We're gonna hope the best for champ. We're gonna believe the best. Let's see if this works out. Look, I'm not even joking. Three minutes. We got three minutes for someone to show up for Champ. Guess who's here? What? Uh, the person who's gonna adopt Champ. No, uh, yeah. really? Yeah, up she's front? up front. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So are you here for Champ? Yes. Are you are you done? Are you filling out the paperwork? Uh, I think I'm just filling it out. Okay, we'll come back. We'll come back. Okay. Yes. Guess what, buddy? You're going home! You're going home! Yay! Attention in the shelter in the front of the valley. We'd like to congratulate Celeste for adopting our boxer champ. You're going home, buddy! You're going home! Yeah. Where's your mom? <laughs> What are you gonna name him, do you know? Yeah. Romeo. Oh, even better, I like it, <laughs> Romeo. Yes, and Romeo, what a good name. Champ's like a nickname, Romeo. Oh, perfect. Champ's adoption, a little bit, fill my heart after losing my boxer flip six months ago. Yeah, for sure, it makes me feel a little better. But you know what else keeps me going? You, when you share this video, it helps these dogs get adopted. And when you become a member, you're being a part of this just like me. The best way to get involved and get started is go volunteer at your local rescue or shelter. You remember, all the treats that you see in the video, they are my treats. I make these, I bake these. Check it out, look at that. Air dried, slow baked, limited ingredients, human quality. Your dog will love it. And if they don't, I'll refund you. And if you want to see pup dates on any of these dogs, I'll put it right here or link it down in the description below. Thank you.